Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for 292 Baby Educational Videos, Support for Parents and Caregivers of Infants. I would like you to know that all of the experts featured in our video series have given freely of their time and all are from the Early Childhood Community of Greater Rochester. On behalf of everyone affiliated with the 292 Baby Project, we wish you the very best of luck with your children. 292 Baby is a community collaboration administered by Monroe Community College. Hi. My name is Atisha Benjamin. I'm an art professor at Monroe Community College and I am also a mother of two young children and one on the way. This is a production of 292 Baby Television and I am happy to be here today with Sue Costanza who is a nurse and also lactation consultant at Rochester General Hospital. We're going to be talking today about latching on in terms of breastfeeding and also positions for moms and babies to hold while breastfeeding. Hi Sue. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? <laughs> Good. Good. Um, I think the most important, because I have some PowerPoint slides and some things that we're going to kind of talk about, the most important, the key importance of breastfeeding is getting a good latch on and the positioning. And especially we're going to, what I do is work with moms in the hospital, but I also see them outpatient. But I think a lot of it's going to be the first couple days in the hospital. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about. Okay. Okay. And those are, that's a crucial time. Very crucial. Okay. Very crucial. Okay. Now, I guess my first question is, why is it important? for a baby to get a, a correct latch. I think in all of the pictures that we see, you just kind of take it for granted. Baby knows what to do, mama knows what to do. And that's funny because people that, which I encourage breastfeeding class for everybody, um, even if they're just even thinking about a little bit, take a class. Because this is what they learn, that it's gonna be a little bit of work, okay? Right. So initially, um, being able to be there with somebody to help them through that first latch on is very important. So the nurses help deliver, they stay on with the mom, and I think then it's very important for them to continue with the help and assistance of somebody. Okay. Now, if the baby doesn't get a correct latch, can that affect how much milk the baby is actually getting? Oh, good question. The baby, if we look at the breast mold that I brought, okay, um, we're going to see within the breast, their alveoli, okay, their ducts, their milk sinuses, which are located basically underneath the areola area, okay? And if the baby just latches onto the nipple, what do you think is going to happen? Number one, they're not going to get enough. Number two, the mom's going to be sore. Okay. So we want to make sure that they get a good amount. What they take out, mama remakes. So it works on the system supply and demand. Okay. So if they're there and then are not really doing any good nursing, again, they're not going to be able to get enough. Okay. Now, how does a baby get a good latch? How does mom know that baby is actually latched on correctly? Um, question feels of the day. it. Okay. Um, baby will be on. It should not hurt. Sensitivity is one thing. Pain is another. So. The sensitivity comes because the baby is stretching and pulling, basically, on the nipple. And the nipple, it's becoming very pliable during pregnancy, okay. so it shouldn't really hurt unless there's a sensitivity anyways. Okay. Um, prenatally, moms will have a little bit more sensitivity along with that. But if they get on and um, really work that nipple, they shouldn't even really feel it. So the baby gets on, latches, pulls. Okay, mom's gonna feel that. It's a weird feeling. You felt it before your first oh, baby. Yeah. It's gonna be different each child, okay? But when the babies get on again, you know, they're really pulling. It shouldn't hurt. Babies will be in good position. They're supported all the way around, so the baby's not gonna yank and pull at it. They'll know if it's good and if it's not. But again, that's what they're learning. Okay. That's what they're gonna learn. Now you mentioned soreness, and this is actually something that I read on a website a couple of days ago. Um, it said that if there is pain, then that means that the baby isn't correctly latched. But I guess I just understood that first time moms that are breastfeeding are going to have a certain amount of soreness. So I guess that's not true. Then. Um, 
true. Some moms are, I think, are a little more prone to being a little bit more sore than others. Okay. Um, I think, um, I find, again, if they're latched on, they're usually pretty good. But again, if they have that sensitivity, yeah, they're going to have discomfort. If the baby falls asleep and comes down to the tip of the nipple, just one time of being on there incorrectly can make it sore. Mm -hmm. Making it sore for all the additional breastfeedings after that until it's healed up a little bit. Okay, because I have to say I remember a period of maybe two days where every time the baby went to nurse, I would start crying. Right, right, and <laughs> your toes will curl. Right. right, yeah, and then okay. once I got over that, it was great for first and, and second baby. Okay. And I'm hope, hoping this one too. Perfect, and you'll know the difference though because you've already breastfed before, so you're gonna right. know what feels right and what doesn't. Right. And again, going to class, getting some knowledge base, trying to figure out um, um, what do I need to do for myself and the baby to be, be considered a, a team. And I think the teamness takes, you know, being considered, we call them a, a dyad, a, a couplet. The first two weeks, it's going to be a little bit rough. Mm. After that, it's smooth sailing, a good majority of the time. My mom still sometimes have a little bit of difficulty after. Okay. And since moms are encouraged to switch sides so often, mom and baby get a lot of practice exactly. in the hospital and at home exactly. for the first few days. Exactly. Um, we have them alternate positions and we have them work with the different positions. And we do because um, wherever the baby is on initially, if you, you figure the baby is constantly on this way and pulling, okay? gets a little sore maybe for the mom, we're going to change her to another position at breast. Mm. So when we alternate positions, two things happen. We're on a different angle, okay, and we're also empty in different milk ducts. Okay. So when we, and we're going to talk about positions later, but when we do positions and we do create a position, cross create a position, we empty more here. Football position, we empty more on the side and lying, lying down empty underneath. Okay. So again, we're going to work with that. If a mom is really comfortable with one position, you know, I let her use that for a little while because again, it just takes a lot of practice. Right. Now, since different positions stimulate different ducts, is it okay or are we encouraged to try different positions then? I usually tell moms, if you're uncomfortable with this, work with it and then try okay. others. Some moms are great with cradle. Okay, some moms are great with just football, um, but usually out of uh, the four that there are, five that there are, they end up with two. Okay. Cradle, sideline, sideline is great for nighttime right. feedings. Um, I have moms who've had C-sections, find it very comfortable as long as their body is pillow here, pillow here, pillow between legs, and, and they're very comfortable with the nursing. Okay, so the more pillows, the better then. Exactly, I pillow them to death. Yes. Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I even tell moms too, they come to the hospital, top of the list should be a nursing pillow. If they don't have a nursing pillow, they should have bring their own pillows. Our pillows are washed all the time, so they're real slippery. Mm, okay. So I tell them to bring their own pillows with their own pillowcases so that, of course, they won't be taken from them. But right. uh, the more pillows they have, the more support they have. Arm support, leg support, head support, and that's key. Okay. Mom's comfort is number one. Now, in discussing uh, latching on, what should the baby's mouth look like with the breast in there? Should the tongue be above the nipple? Should it be below the nipple? Well, that's, that's a good question. If we look at, again, the mold, okay, the baby will open wide, okay, latch on to a good amount of that breast tissue. So bypass the nipple, latch on a good amount of the breast tissue, okay? So for you to see the baby's mouth, baby's upper lip will be flanged up, lower lip will be flanged down and out, okay? If we were to pull at the corner of the baby's mouth and that latch is good and the seal is good, we'll be able to see the baby's tongue underneath the mom's nipple. Okay. Okay? And we should see at that time round, nice rounded cheeks. There should be no little cute little dimples at the corner of the baby's mouth. Mothers and fathers say, yeah, but they look so cute there. <laughs> but I said, I'm here because there's a problem and it's usually because the baby won't stay on correctly. Um, the seal isn't good enough. 
nipples are sore because the baby's on and off not getting that good seal. Okay. Okay. So a correct latch shouldn't be too cute then. Right. It should look exactly. effective. Exactly. It should be effective. <laughs> yeah. And then what's the other key thing? Baby's mouth is nice and rounded. You see the baby latch good and then you should hear the swallow. Right. The audible swallowing. Right. That's the cute part. Yes, okay. that is the cute part. The only thing with the audible swallowing is you don't hear it until that milk has increased in quantity. Okay. So in the beginning, you're more so watching, looking, feeling. And if the mom is supporting her breast um, and the baby's on, she can use her index finger to put it right in the baby's throat to feel the swallow. Okay. A partner can look in and see if the baby's swallowing. And that's all, you know, the, the one, another key thing because parents don't know that the baby's supposed to be sucking and swallowing, okay, not just sucking and hanging out. Right, right, okay. Well, you know, I have a nine-year-old mm -hmm. and I also have a two-year-old. Um, and when I was researching breastfeeding with my first daughter, there's so much information to read, right. there's so much to know. And after my own experience, I guess it just came down to a few bullet points for me mm -hmm. uh, to effective breastfeeding. And i just like to run that past you. Perfect. Um, one was that, is the baby's mouth wide open when she's latching on? Mm -hmm. That's one thing I would check for. Right. No, like you said, no pinched lips or just a little opening. Right. But can she get that entire areola into her mouth? Okay. When we talk about areola, okay, it could be this size, which is small, or it could be this size, which is very large. Okay, so no two mothers um, are the same. Okay. So when we tell moms we need to latch on to a good amount of the real area, it's whatever we can get, whatever that baby can get in his or her mouth. Okay. okay? So we want to make sure that, again, and I'd say probably inch, inch and a half, when mothers say to me, well, the baby has got a little, little mouth, won't open the mouth up wide enough, I'll say, watch the baby when he or she cries, or when she yawns, and how wide is mm. it then? Okay. And they'll say, oh, yeah, it gets really wide. That's how wide we can get that baby on. Okay. Okay, when we talk about latch on and for moms to watch the baby when they're close, we're looking for yawn wide, nice and wide. I see. And there really should be, since there's that baby fat, maybe just a little double chin there mm -hmm. as the baby is nursing. Mm -hmm. Just indication that the chin is down and the mouth is wide? Correct. Okay. And I have some pictures on, on the uh, PowerPoint slides that we're going to show, too, okay. for correct latch on and for poor latch on, for people to really watch and, and be aware of. Well, should we get those up? Yeah, yeah, they would be great. Okay, here we go with the correct latch on. You can see even in the picture how the baby's nice and close. Mom is supporting her breast. Okay, baby's going to be able to use his or her reflexes, okay, um, moral reflex to be able to hold, okay, sucking reflex, swallowing reflex, all the reflexes the babies use. Again, we want look for fish lips, which is wide open mouth. Mm, okay. Placement of lips, gums, and tongue, which I said, nice open mouth, um, the tongue should be down underneath the mom's nipple, okay. Um, and we need to get the babies on pretty quick, and they all laugh at me because I, when I put a baby on, I put them on really pretty quickly. Right. Mothers, and, and, I was, and I've had kids, and I have breastfed, and so putting the baby to breast, we're slow because we're tired, because we're medicated. So I've got my hand in, which I teach the dads or significant others, to really get in and bring that baby on quick. Right. Now that okay. you bring that up, that's something I remember from my mm -hmm. hospital stays. Mm -hmm. The lactation consultant will quickly put that baby to breast, whereas right. a mother might want to take her time, and you know, it's right. kind of a sacred thing happening for the first time. Exactly. And besides that, mothers and fathers are very timid, too. They think they're right. going to hurt their baby. And again, when we put the babies on, we're getting, we're not pushing the head in. We're basically holding and supporting the baby's head and neck and bringing them and directing them to mama. Okay. Okay, so baby's wide, mama wants to get them and take advantage of that one nice wide mouth. Okay. And you, you spoke about the lips. Mm -hmm. The baby's lips should be curled back towards the baby's mm -hmm. face. It'll be flanged. The, okay. So the upper lip should be flanged up and out and the lower lip flanged down. Okay. So if you were just to kind of peek at that baby at breast, just kind of look, you'll be able to see that. Okay. And you'll see, and, and there's again another picture we're going to show, that where my fingers are pulling back on the baby that's latched really well, and you know that right. seal is tight because 
even with my fingers pulling back, that baby would not let go. Okay. There's a serious <laughs> suction yeah. happening there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So again, we're looking at the rounded cheeks, which we talked about earlier, not dimpled, okay? And nutritive versus non-nutritive sucking. What is that? Which is, it's very important. Baby sucking and swallowing at breast versus just sucking. Okay. So we want, if the baby's going to be there and doing effective stuff, we want to make sure that baby's doing a good job. So again, I watch and I show the parents how to watch for both. So okay. we're watching again, the sucking, the swallowing, okay? How can you tell, do you think, if the baby is swallowing, we can see it here, but what else do you think would tell you that a baby would be swallowing? I would say even some of these muscles, the jaw muscles in the good. back, maybe even the ears wiggling. Ears wiggling, bit. perfect. Temple area, going in and out. Somebody okay. that looks from behind will see the little head moving. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's good. I mean, those are the things that you're going to be looking, looking at. Right. Instead of even seeing that throat area. Okay. Okay. Babies that are just suckling there will just do flutter, flutter. Okay. And then there's a difference between colostrum sucking, which is that first breast milk that you've been making since you've been 16 weeks pregnant, and that more, the transitional milk that comes in within two, three, five days. Okay. okay? The colostrum sucking is more of this, and the milk sucking is more of this mm. wide open mouth. So that, again, that's the difference, and that's what we I point out to parents also to really watch for. Why do babies suck those two different milks differently? Because the colostrum comes is thick, okay. and, then, and if you sometimes you can hear them when they're like like a straw. Okay. Okay, um, and it comes in small amounts. And the milk, of course, comes in ounces. Right. And the milk comes out faster, and they don't have to do as much work with the milk as they do with the colostrum. Okay. They just have to keep up getting the milk and swallowing down as it's coming in. As it's coming in, okay. you're right. But see, that's why they make, moms make small amounts to begin with, and every time that baby goes to breast, mom will make a little more, a little more, a little more. So they'll get ready to be able to tolerate that full milk okay. feeling. Wow. Human body is amazing. It is amazing. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it, it is unbelievable. It is all because we make, and again, we're, we're the only mammal per se that can give our baby something else besides breast milk. Right. Incredible. Mm -hmm. And you think about um, even um, mammals in the wild, if the babies aren't brought to the teat within a certain length of time, they will die because they have nothing else to be fed. Mm. Okay. In our culture in, in the United States, again, they have formula. Right. But of course, we like to really encourage moms to breastfeed, but for whatever reason, if you know, baby needs to be given something else, again, as a human, we have something else to give. Now, so we spoke about um, audibly hearing the baby swallowing. Mm -hmm. Other than that, how does a mom really know that her baby is satiated and getting enough milk? Um, that's another good question. You're going to watch babies, um, and they eat like we do. They have dinner, and their dinner's not going to be the same each time. It's going to be like us. Sometimes we're starving, we eat everything in sight. Sometimes we pick, okay? Sometimes we, again, we have dessert after we eat, um, which could be a half hour later, and then we have snacks in between. So we're watching for the baby. In the beginning, you're going to find the baby could just go back and forth and back and forth, which I let them, okay? Then you're fine, and, and they cluster hourly, hour and a half, two hours, okay? Which satisfies them, and then they go a longer period of time after that, okay? okay? When the milk, though, comes in quantity, they come off, and what do they call it? Milk drunk. Milk drunk. I've never milk heard drunk. that term. Yes. So they'll come off and they'll be completely satisfied with and milk coming down the side of their mouth <laughs> <laughs> and what we call they look drunk. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a satisfied baby to me. Exactly. Exactly. That's what we're looking at. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I, think, I think what some parents and moms go through, some criticism maybe from family and friends is that baby's not getting enough. And that can be right. a huge discouragement. Right, and it is. And, and you find that if the mom isn't supported prenatally, isn't supported in the hospital or at home, and if she has problems with breastfeeding, do you think it's gonna work? 
No. No, not at no. all. So they need the support. So in my breastfeeding class, prenatally, I'll talk about you need a support system. People that have been positive around you with breastfeeding, your mother, your sisters, friends, people that, again, will support your thoughts on it and, and be supportive for you wanting to do this. Right. And your significant other especially. Right. And it sounds like a mom should really take, mom and partner, a breastfeeding class. Yeah. Prenatally I, before right. the baby's born. And I really encourage that because, again, um, they're going to get a knowledge base. They're not going to remember everything that's said in that class. Um, my class, I really, um, really focus on, again, what we're talking about today, latch on positioning. This is the only thing that you remember. The baby needs to be wide. The baby needs to be on there well. Mm. Okay? Um, and, again, that is important for them and they have to know that it's going to be a little bit of work right and when they come in the hospital then this is what they're thinking okay I know that it's going to be a little bit of time for this baby to latch and of course early on we kind of talked about the difference between girls and boys we laugh about that in the hospital because girls for some reason come out and know what they're supposed to do like mm. we are demanding know what we want <laughs> and the boys come out with mouth open feed me you know, so it's a, a good right. a good laugh there. You know, we and it's not with all girls and boys, but with the good majority, girls <laughs> sometimes do a little bit better than the boys. Well, that's news to me. That's something I'll look out for mm -hmm. because my previous two are girls. Mm -hmm. This is a boy, baby Ben. We already mm -hmm. have a name, so I'm going to kind of look for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll have to tell me. Okay, how yeah. That comes out, but again, you've already already had the experience, so you're going to be knowing what you're going to be looking for. Right. So I might have to teach him. He has to do a little work exactly. there, too. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had two twins, though, yesterday that were boys, and they were really doing pretty good, surprisingly. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll I mean, hold it's not out with all hope. of them, but we, we have a good chuckle about it. The nurses will find me. So you need to really see this patient, you know, the, they did the, 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 this, about this, about the baby, and then they'll say, I'll say, what, what sex is it, male? Well, yeah, well, that's typical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Now, I know you, you brought some examples here of the actual size of a baby's stomach mm -hmm. and how much milk they can actually hold, I think. Mm -hmm. They're, They're called really what we call little belly balls, okay? okay? And if we look at the size of the one, the marble, this is the size of a baby's tummy at day one. Might be just a touch bigger than that. Um, but and we're looking at 5 to 7 mLs, cc's, a little bit, a okay. little amount. The second ball, which we call a shooter marble, okay, is at day three. Okay, so we're looking at 22 to 27 mLs, okay, which are, uh, which is, you know, a little less than an ounce, okay. Um, and again, babies are taking small amounts to begin with. Each time they go to breast, they're going to make a little more. Mom's going to make a little more, a little more to fill that tummy. Okay, and then this one, the ping pong ball, is the size of a baby's tummy at day 10. Wow. Okay, so again, and that's about mm, two to two and a half, three ounces, okay? Okay. Where again, we're filling up tummies, okay? Then if you look at a, uh, an adult stomach, it's the size of a softball. Okay. So again, we're looking at small amounts to begin with, and even the baby, again, the baby has small tummies, so we don't have to force them, per se, to even take more than what they're actually taking in. Right. And that's why breastfeeding babies are always nursing frequently because their tummy's small and they need to fill it. Right, and they're digesting quickly. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, the colostrum especially is, uh, again, comes in teaspoonfuls and it works as a laxative um, okay. and it, it's pushing things through. So, but it's also very um, easily digested. Okay. So that's incredible. A marble size at day one. Right. Ping pong ball at day 10. Right. So still right. incredible right. growth happening exactly. there. Exactly. Exactly. But we're, again, we're looking at small amount colostrum, more breast milk per se when it comes increases in quantity. Okay. Teaspoonfuls, ounces. Okay. Now the mature milk, is that what's called hind milk or no? Um, mature milk, well first we again have the colostrum, then we have transitional milk. Okay. And that transitional milk where the colostrum runs through the breast milk for the first two weeks, two weeks mature milk comes in. Again, different consistency, um, per se the ingredients are different, things are changing, okay? Um, so when we look at milk coming in in quantity and in, and in transitional mature milk, we're looking at four milk, 
the milk when the baby first gets on that satisfies their thirst. Okay. And then we're looking for whole milk. Okay. Then we're looking for the hind milk that puts the weight on, the fat content. Okay. Okay. So when we know a baby's gaining weight, um, we know that, of course, they're getting that hind milk. And that's a big thing because people always talk about time at breast. Do they need to be there a specific time to get the hind milk? No. And I don't time breastfeeding. And so I really, and this is what I really encourage moms not to do, do not look at the clock. Okay. Now, what did you used to do for, with your kids? I started out looking at the clock. Okay. Because that was some of the encouragement that right. you got. But then it just got kind of natural. You know, I, right. I knew, I just knew when the baby was done Was feeding. done. Right. In the beginning, of course, if somebody comes in and says to you, you need, you need to nurse at least 15 minutes aside, you're going to look up at that clock and you're going to watch it. Even if the baby is doing good stuff for five minutes and kind of hanging there for 10, mm -hmm. right? So again, we're looking at the sucking and swallowing versus just the sucking, okay? Right. And um, when the baby is there again i have to have moms even remove babies when they've just been there hanging out for a certain length of time especially when they're sore because okay. the babies will be wide and then ankle right down onto the tip of the nipple okay you know something that new moms they don't want to get wrong obviously this is feeding your baby um, but eventually they come into just a nice groove just mm -hmm. feeling natural about it and right. you just know when right. the baby is done exactly exactly but again that first couple days in the hospital um, they have a lot of questions about it how do I know now what do you think else is what else is going to tell you besides watching the swallow um, watching um, just the baby at breast coming off satisfied what else is going to tell us that their baby's getting enough I would say assessing the baby after he or she's done feeding. Okay. What else do you think in the beginning? Do you remember what we used to mm. watch for? Wet diapers? Yes. Poopy diapers? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the wet diapers and poopies, or stools, we talk baby talk because right. we have kids. Oh, yeah. Um, we talk about first day of age, okay? So 24 hours, first 24 hours, we're looking for one wet diaper, one poopy diaper black, sticky, tarry, which is called meconium. Right. Okay. Second day, we're looking for too wet, too poop. Okay. The stool now is changing to blacky green. Okay. Third day, three and three. Now we want the stool changing from green, like a greeny brown. By day four, browny yellow. By day five, yellow, loose, seedy, okay. explosive stool. Right. Okay. Which moms think is diarrhea, but it's not. It's just loose. Right. And okay. the one thing I appreciate about, appreciate about that time is that there's low odor. Exactly. That's beautiful. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Although the fathers still say, oh, this stinks. They said, no, this is nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> but again, that's what's telling us. So when parents want to go in the room, how do I know my baby's getting enough? Well, we have charts that we keep track. Uh, we give to the moms. Um, and I think the majority of the hospitals do. It's a seven-day log. We keep track of that first 24 hours, the second day, the third day. And for them, the parents look at this, and within, we're within average or more, they know that this baby's doing okay. Right. When you and, can check off that list and say, okay, right. I got the poopy, right. got the pee typer. Right. I know and, my baby's And the good. biggest thing is the color of the stool. Okay. You know, if you see, you know, I get a call in and the baby is, say that the baby is nursing for short periods of time, Time. Um, and we're talking maybe day five, okay, and the stool's been yellow for two days, and mom's worried about the time they're at breast. I said, don't worry about the time. Baby's wetting. Baby's having yellow CD stool. Have you brought the baby in for a weight check? Oh, yeah, the baby's gained weight. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. It's the moms that call that maybe haven't been seen, okay. Um, the baby's stool is maybe still black at day six or day seven, mm. okay, and you have a baby that's crying all the time or sleeping all the time that you have to really worry about. Okay. Okay, because if you see dark stool at six, seven, eight days, that mom's milk's not in yet or, or and or it's not being digested by that baby. Okay. Okay, so the recommendation um, by American Academy of Pediatrics is for babies, breastfed babies, to be seen a day, one to two days after discharge. Right, right. Which is important. Okay. You know, you think about, and you remember, you're in the hospital, you've got basically, it works out pretty well because you've got help, 
then what goes ha home or what what happens at home when you when you get there your milk comes in right. you get engorged then you can't get the baby on so again then there's another <laughs> there's another issue with that right actually with uh, my two-year-old I found that I had to call an emergency breastfeeding hotline. It mm -hmm. had been so long since my first one right. and the engorgement scared me. So right. having the support in the hospital is one thing. Mm -hmm. Being home and, and with that new little creature is a whole other thing. Exactly. But again, it's, there's so much support out there in the community now that people are able to call. Yes, you know? and that's very important mm -hmm. to know there's a number that you can call at any hospital that you deliver at. Is that correct? You can call at any hospital. Um, we have the 922 care line, which take care of our calls from 8 a.m. to midnight Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8 on Sunday. Okay. We have a 24-hour support line within our hospital that a registered nurse answers, like even the middle of the night. I'm there during the week, or and or they call their pediatrician or obstetrician. And 292 baby. Of course. Correctly. Yep. Yes. You Very can good. access all of the information on the website right. and uh, right. scroll right. through and find what you need. Right. Exactly. Now we're talking about getting the baby on the breast. How do you actually get the baby off? Okay, good idea. Let's first, let, let's go to the next PowerPoint slide because we talked about the nutritive. This is again, perfect example of nice wide latch. Okay, when I show this in class and I ask dads about it, I'll say, now why do you think this is so good? And they'll say, nice open mouth. Mm -hmm. And we've got the fish lips. Okay, those are my fingers pulling away, which okay. that baby wouldn't let go for anything. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, so again, we're, we're really looking at a wide, nice open mouth. Good seal, if I were to pull back at the corner of the mouth, you would see that baby has, the tongue is down underneath um, mom's nipple and over their gum line, okay? And we're in this picture, we're seeing nice rounded cheeks, mm. okay? Right. Which we shouldn't see the dimples. Okay, and then we're going to be watching for the swallow, something you can't see on a picture. Right. Okay. This latch is, is poor. Okay, you see the baby on just the tip, and that's the mother pulling back because she's worried about the baby's breathing. Mm, okay? okay. And when the baby's at breast, they can be positioned just so that you don't have to worry about the breathing okay. at all. Okay. Um, I do a lot of breast support with rolled up washcloths, rolled up pillowcase, rolled up receiving blanket underneath that breast. So when the mom supports breast to get the baby on, she can let go because that breast is being supported, which okay. works out really well. Right. Then they don't have to worry about their nose. And you don't have to pull back on the breast to worry about the nose because what's going to happen if moms pull back? Just like that mom is pulling back here. Right, then the baby will get the nipple only. Get the nipple, exactly. Okay. okay. And it's in a different position in the mouth, so the mom's nipples will get sore. This particular baby, too, ended up back in the special care nursery, which is what we call um, breastfeeding jaundice. They weren't mm. getting enough milk because the baby's only on the tip. Okay. And as we're discussing this, uh, it really makes me realize that that's one reason why moms would maybe just have the baby on the nipple, is that they're afraid that the nose is buried in the breast yes. and, not, and the baby's not Correct. breathing. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they have to, as they said, I, with breast support, you can do almost anything. Right. Large breasts, small breasts, um, moms worry about it all. You know, and I laugh because, you know, you'll see the moms with very large breasts and babies' heads that are very small. Right. And this is what the mom's, her comment will be. You know, oh, look at the baby's head so little and my breast so big. It's okay, and again, when we talk about positions, and the position for a larger breasted woman is football position, works really well for them. They're okay. able to control baby's head and neck and their breast at the okay. same time. And it seems an age old uh, practice like breastfeeding, nature would have taken care of that. Baby exactly. will be able to breathe and eat at the exactly. same time. Exactly, because they want to be able to do the same. So they will right. move themselves around or they will detach themselves so the mom won't per se, smother them. Right, not That's breathing what the moms is think. not comfortable for babies either. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Perfect. Okay, so kind of how to facilitate a good latch on. We want to make sure that the mom's comfortable. Um, especially in the hospital, I make sure that if she's very uncomfortable versus a C-section versus um, maybe she had um, a really bad vaginal delivery, um, and she can't really sit very well, I want to make sure that she's medicated. So, you know, they give the medications in the hospital that won't hurt the baby, and I encourage them to take it, okay? Um, 
and so I want them in a chair because it's so much easier to breastfeed sitting upright than it is in a, in a bed that a million women have laid in and they're just not comfortable. They're just back. They don't have no support at all. Right. Okay. Um, and then again, having mom support the baby, okay, support her breast, well supported, meaning boppy, pillows, whatever, and bringing baby to her, okay. Um, I don't think we really need to look at that anymore, that one. Um, this one shows you how it is. We're going to bring baby close to breast, and we're going from really bottom up. Okay. Okay, this is perfect picture for getting a baby latched on. I love that picture. Well, wow, look how wide the baby's mm -hmm. mouth is in that third picture. Exactly. Exactly. And you take advantage of the baby opening wide. So what that mom's doing is teasing the middle of the baby's lower lip with her nipple. Baby opens wide because it's that reflex, the rooting reflex to open wide. Mm -hmm. And then she's taking advantage of the wide open mouth and bringing him on or her on um, pretty quickly. Okay. That's okay. when that's swift. Uh, bringing the baby exactly. to the breast should happen. Exactly. Beautiful. Okay. And then when the baby's on, we're looking for that milk transfer. Okay. So some of the things you're going to hear is a puff of air from the nose, a CA sound k -k -k -k, when the baby's swallowing, deeper jaw excursion when the baby's opening wider. Okay. Instead, remember I told you colostrum, they're doing more of that little, little, little sucking. Right. They're opening wider. And then we're watching the temple going in and out, okay. the vibration. Okay, you see at the back of the head, so you'll see the head moving. Okay, top of the real ear moves inward towards baby's mouth. Okay, um, and then you can feel the swallow or hear the swallow. Okay. Okay, so that's important. Okay, now this we talk about basically sleepy babies. Okay, hmm. arousing babies in the hospital. Guaranteed, 99.5% of the babies are very sleepy yes. after. Okay, so. We want to really encourage that baby to nurse, especially during the day. We've got, we're motivated, we've got the time, and I'm talking about mothers, mm -hmm. okay? They're not as tired because they're used to sleeping at night and being awake during the day, okay? So we really want to encourage them to put those babies to breast. And I usually tell them every three hours you're going to wake that baby up from start time to start time during the day and on demand. So if that baby wants to nurse, more than that, every hour, every hour and a half, every two hours, you're going to nurse them. Okay. Okay. Because what is what are parents looking for? Feed in the day and sleep, sleep at, at night. night. Right. The problem is the babies do what they do in utero, which is sleep in the day because mom's basically rocking and rolling them all day, mm -hmm. and party at night. Right. Oh yeah. Tell me about it. Exactly. Now, yes, and you can feel that as soon as you sit down. Um, the prolactin, the hormone that makes the milk, works 10 times higher at night. So when do you think that baby's going to want to nurse? At night. Nighttime. Yeah. And what do moms want to do at nighttime? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> so we really encourage um, moms to keep their babies with them 24-7, especially in the hospital. Watch for feeding cues, which again, the last cue is going to be the cry, so you want to catch them the early cues, okay, um, to be able to keep up with the feedings. Okay, because okay. especially mom's nipples are sore, um, um, they're not feeding as frequently. We really want to be able to work with that, the mom and the baby. Okay. Okay. Um, also, we're going to see here um, if the baby doesn't wake up to feed. Okay, tell moms to work with them short times, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. okay. So we take the hat off and the blankets off. Okay, we change the diaper. We wipe the bottom with a nice warm washcloth. And this is where sometimes you'll hear, oh, I used a cold washcloth on their face, cold on their feet. I don't use cold at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're not going to wake up with all this, I don't, then you're going to put them back down again. Okay. Um, the alcohol, the cord, that's still a controversial thing regarding putting alcohol on cords. If you ask one pediatrician, they'll say one thing, another strong, you know, does different than RGH does. We're trying to get all standard. Um, and until, you know, we do regarding the alcohol use, I use it as a waking technique because it's, it's cold. Okay. okay? So I'm, I'm basically doing twofold, drying it, the cord a little bit and also waking them a little bit. Okay. Okay. Sitting them and burping them. And you always want to burp your baby before you feed them. Do you remember ever doing that no. with yours? Always. Really? They feed better. They wake up better. Okay. And if they get a burp, if you get a couple burps out of them, 
they're going to feed better. Right, they're going to take more. And okay. especially when the milk comes in in quantity, they're not going to throw up either. Okay. Because they're not going to have that bubble in there. So two burps, before and after feeding. Couple. That. And, and again, you're not going to actually hear it. You're going to feel it. So if you're sitting that baby up, let me just take my baby doll here. I was okay. waiting to get her. In. See? Yes. And we get a good grip of her, and she's leaning, so her chin is right here. Right. Okay? And we lean that baby up to burp, okay? And we can hear us patting that back, okay? Because right. you know how parents are so light like they think they're going to hurt their baby. You want to make sure you raise them up a little bit. Right. You're going to feel the burps here in their chin, like a vibration versus hearing it. So you're going to oh, feel okay. it versus hearing it. Right. Okay? Again, you're waking them up. You're doing all this. After this, then we're going to try to put them to breast. Okay. If they have no interest in 10 to 15 minutes, right side, left side, this position, that position, we're going to put them back down again. Okay. Okay. And we're going to, and I do it more so I put them down just um, loosely wrapped. Because if they're really nice and snug and all wrapped back up again, tight, tight, what are they going to do? They're going to sleep. sleeping. Right. Okay. So we kind of work with that. Yeah. Okay. So that's how we work, work, wake these sleepy babies, just to try to get them to breast. And this is, by the way, one of the best ways i found to burp a baby, is just to kind of have that head and, and neck kind of cradle. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Really the chin. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be doing with them. And dads and, you know, are sometimes uncomfortable about that. But they get a good grip, and I make sure that they hold them. And I said, if the baby goes back, you've got this hand and you've got this grip underneath. So you'll be fine right. working with them. Okay. This baby is very realistic with the cone head exactly. right after birth. Exactly, but it is pretty big. You know, yeah. some of the some of the babies they bring to the um, to the class are teeny little dollies and animals with big noses. And yeah. I said, oh, you're hoping your baby doesn't look like that, right? You know, that'd make breastfeeding a little difficult. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know. Um, also, we do skin to skin. Okay, so for babies, especially after they're born and the babies have no interest in nursing, instead of putting them down to, I'll have them put skin to skin. That okay. helps with just stimulating milk production and helps baby get used to smell and, you know, the surroundings and helps them with the nursing. Okay, and then as I said, we put them back, you know, loosely wrapped, but, you know, that's what we're going to see in the hospital, very sleepy kids. Right. Okay, and we're just kind of trying to show them what we want them to do, and of course, they're trying to show us what they want us to do for them, mm -hmm. you know. So, and again, I think it takes a good couple of weeks for us to be really considered a team. Now, I had both extremes between my two daughters. My first daughter was very quick to nurse. We have pictures of her nursing within an hour or two mm -hmm. being born. Um, then with Layla, the two-year-old, she was hopelessly sleepy mm -hmm. and would not nurse. And I started to get a little concerned. The nurses wanted to give her formula in the hospital right, because right. I guess her protein was down or blood sugar. Blood sugar. Mm -hmm. um, so how can moms know that, you know, it's okay, the baby is just sleepy, it could be the drugs that they were given during, okay. during uh, labor? Usually what we do is, a nurse is followed by protocol and usually within four hours they start getting a little bit nervous. Myself, I mean, after the baby's born, if they get an initial good feed, right within that first hour, that will last them, you know, for a good majority of time, okay? okay. So that's if the baby's fed initially. Um, and I'll just wait. We just wait. We try them every hour, work with them 10 minutes, put them down. Work with them 10 minutes, put them down until they're ready to latch, okay? okay? The babies that haven't latched at all, um, we still observe them. They do check blood sugars. Um, if for some reason the baby's blood sugar is low and, the, and has no interest in breastfeeding, um, yeah, they'll have to give something. So usually we have moms hand express, try to use a breast pump to give them, you know, even two, three cc's, even a small amount, just to give them a little bit, to give them their little oomph and get up and go. Okay. And you'll be surprised at when you give them something, how they perk right up and are ready to nurse. Right, right. You know, for a mom who is, is a strong advocate, like myself, um, of breastfeeding, to know that your baby had to get formula in the hospital can feel something like a failure. Exactly, and people feel like that. Right. But they also can't feel like that all the time, because sometimes for medical reasons, babies do need to get for, be given formula also. Right. And I should finish the story by saying that Layla nursed for the next 15 months. Mm -hmm. So we had a very really long, well. right long exactly. great nursing. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Very good. 
So great. Excellent. Now, we mentioned briefly um, getting the baby off. It's basically about breaking that suction, mm -hmm. is it not? Break it, yeah, breaking okay. the seal. So what you're going to do basically when the baby's on, moms or, or dads, they also help put the finger right in the side of the mouth and break the seal. Okay. What you find are some moms that will, you know, say, now, let's see, just take the baby off, and they yank the baby off. Mm -hmm. Now what's going to happen? Ouch. The baby's not going to let go. Right. So, yeah, so it hurts. And, again, breaking that seal will help the mom. And also the baby, the biggest thing, though, about breaking the seal is when the baby feels anything near their mouth, what are they going to do? They're going to root toward it. And they're, but also they're going to suck more. Oh, okay. And so they're faking the mothers out. And we talk about this all the time. I said, now nah, put the finger still in there, take that baby off. Because as soon as they take them off, what do they do when they take them off? They, they're lying there sleeping. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, we're, again, when we talk about um, how long does the baby need to be there for, it's sucking and swallowing versus just hanging. Okay. Now, you talk about the just hanging. Babies do have that natural desire to suck. Mm -hmm. Would they use mom as a pacifier? Um, that's a good question. They want their mother, whatever. I want to be suckling. Um, some will say that, yeah, I'll leave them on and let them do whatever. Okay. When I see moms that have sore nipples, I want to make sure that they're learning correctly to begin with, which is, again, and you're going to hear a lot, sucking and swallowing versus just mm -hmm. hanging. Okay. Um, I don't usually use the word as pacifier in the beginning. The baby's using it as a pacifier um, just because, yeah, the baby needs to do some suckling. But also, what is the baby looking for in the beginning? Milk. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. want that milk. Right. So you're going to find that they're, rather than using a pacifier, okay, and I brought some pacifiers with me, okay, now that we're talking about that, mm -hmm. okay, if we look at these pacifiers, Okay, this is, of course, a bottle nipple, but there's pacifiers like that. There's so many different, okay? And we go into a room, and I go into a room, and I say to a mom, okay, now, you've got this pacifier. Let's put this next to your nipple. Does it look anything like your nipple? And you'll say, oh, no, it doesn't. Okay. Now we got this one, little short, little flat thing, okay? Does this look anything like your nipple and or this, whatever they have in there, Okay. Now, we're teaching baby to suck one way, and that one, we need the baby to be nursing off of you, learning your nipple, okay? If the baby gets on here, what is that baby going to suck? Just the nipple. Just the nipple. Right. And what does the baby need to do with the mama? Have as much in his mouth again, as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So again, this is why we don't use pacifiers in the beginning, oh, okay. okay? What can we do instead of? Say that we've been nursing, 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 nursing. Okay? Well, I, we want that baby to digest what they just had. So what can we do, do you think, to calm a baby that maybe you think is still hungry? Isn't, but... Uh, I've heard of people offering their finger Perfect. to the baby. Okay, and we're going to put in so that the nail's down. Okay. Okay? So, and I teach dads, significant others, to do that. And what are they going to pick up with the finger in the mouth? They're going to pick up suck. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're going to pick up what the tongue feels like, the roof of the mouth, but the most important is, is the baby's mouth moist or is it dry? And if it's moist, you know the baby's hydrated enough, it's dry, mama needs to feed more. Oh, okay. So in the pacifier can't tell you that. Right. So instead of giving that in the beginning, okay, nurse, just keep putting that baby to breast to really get that milk in in quantity. Right. Okay. Um, and again, the finger works as a short-term thing. And you'll find that sometimes with babies, it's all they need to do. Let's suck a little. The, the finger is warm, it's skin, and they can pull it all in versus a pacifier they can't. Okay. Okay. And the dads sometimes feel like, oh, good, I have something to do with this baby now. Oh, right, right, something to offer. Yeah. <laughs> and again, you think about, okay, did we wrap this baby tight enough? Did we check the diaper? Did we burp? Did we do all the stuff? You know, and that's kind of the last resort. Let's use finger and let's see if we can settle the baby. Okay. Now, it's not that I'm totally against pacifiers. It's let's get milk in, the baby's weighed up, and your nipple's feeling okay. Right. So we're talking about a couple weeks. Okay. And the American Academy of Pediatrics um, talks about, you know, with, with SIDS and all that, about giving pacifiers after to breastfeeding babies after one month of age when the breastfeeding is all established. Okay. Now, we talked a little bit before the show, and I told you that my two daughters, 
never took a pacifier. Right. Actually, if we wanted to laugh, we would try to give one of them one, and they would, their faces would turn, mm -hmm. not interested mm -hmm. in it. So if a mom is exclusively breastfeeding, she doesn't really have to give a pacifier right. unless that's right. her pre preference. Right, okay. exactly. Exactly. And again, because of the American Academy of Peds, though, recommendation for um, pacifiers with SIDS, I always tell parents, this is what I feel you need to talk to your pediatrician mm. regarding that. After. Right. Which is a serious concern. You exactly. Have to exactly. Consider. Exactly. So they need to talk to their pediatrician. But for breastfed babes, babies, getting that breastfeeding established over a month, Okay, again, it's, they talk to their pediatrician about what they, what they need to use or should use, or some babies just don't even want any. Right. You know, and you figure breastfed babies are with their mothers more than bottle-fed babies because they're nursing more. Right. They're nursing more frequently. And so baby gets a chance to bond with mom, who mm -hmm. is source of food, rather exactly. than bond with the little piece of plastic that exactly. they can't be without. Exactly. Exactly. You'd be surprised at how many pacifiers I see. We don't give them at Rochester General. We don't give pacifiers out. Parents, if they want to, they can bring it in. But again, it's all in the education. I mean, from what I just said, looking at that nipple, baby's learning to nurse on you with one nipple, they don't get anything from it. Okay, we'd rather have them nurse at breast to get that milk to come in. I mean, wouldn't you rather just breastfeed versus using a, a pacifier? Right, yeah. definitely. See? So, okay, it's good. It's good. Well, any other important points to know about latching on? Um, I think we covered them all. Okay. I think the, the biggest thing is getting a good, um, again, wide mouth latch, good swallows, and again, we're going to talk about positioning too, um, but that's where it all comes together. Okay, looking for that wide open mouth, lips flared, flanged, mm -hmm. um, and knowing that the baby is getting Got a by good looking seal at the and the stool. stool. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, Very great. Good. Okay. Well, thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay. It was fun. What we'd like to do is bring to you some newborn tips this week. And many of these tips are just common advice that you may or may not have heard before, but I'd like to start out with one important safety message, and that is never shake a baby. You've seen the commercials, shaking a baby can be very harmful, and we just want to get that message out over and over again. So try not to, in even a, a fit of frustration or even an attempt to soothe your baby, shaking is not what we want to do. Cuddling, holding, rocking, those are all fine. If you find yourself feeling that frustrated, just Go ahead and let your baby down. Sleeping patterns. Newborns do sleep a lot, and they can sleep up to 18 to 20 hours. So if you find your, your baby's just sleeping excessively, as long as he's waking up three to four hours, he's probably fine. If you find your baby skipping a feeding, sleeping straight through to the, the next feeding, that could be a problem, and it's often an early sign of illness if your baby's not waking up at the expected time for a feeding. So if they're going more than six or seven hours, in a row without waking to feed, give your doctor a call. Keep your baby smoke free. You've heard the, the difficulties of secondhand smoke. Babies are even more prone to some of those difficulties and they include an increased risk for infection, influenza, respiratory infections, and increased risk of ear infections because that's part of the respiratory tree. And also an increased risk of colic. And for fussy babies, some of that exposure to smoke can make them even fussier. So if you can't quit your smoking yourself, at least make the commitment that you're going to smoke outside of the house so that your baby is not getting exposed. The back to sleep campaign, that just means when you put your baby to sleep, put him on his back. Babies will have a much lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome and will be safer with that back sleeping position. And the last one is when you're getting ready to go to your doctor or the next well child visit, go ahead and make a list. Most mothers will tell you that their memory was shot somewhere during delivery and they just can't remember all the things they wanted to bring up at the doctor's visit. Go ahead and make a list. We don't mind you bringing that list in. Or even better yet, give us a call at 292-BABY. That's 292-2229. And we'll help answer some of those general questions so that you can save your specific questions for your doctor when you come in to see him for your visit. And those are your newborn tips for the week. Amazing grace. Baby's brains don't grow by themselves. The sound but when you sing to your baby, 
Talk to your baby and play with your baby. His brain cells learn to grow. So sing to your baby. Talk to your baby. Play with your baby. Two Nine Two Baby is a community collaboration of many community partners, and it's administered by Monroe Community College. What you're seeing is a list of those who are supporting or have supported the efforts of Two Nine Two Baby to reach out to help support parents and caregivers of infants. We would like to thank each of these contributors for their own unique contribution to this effort. Good morning, sunshine. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Baby's brains don't grow She'll by themselves. Be round the mountain when she but when you sing to your baby, She'll be coming round the mountain. talk She'll to your baby, round the mountain. and play She'll with your baby, round the mountain when she his brain cells learn to grow. We will all come out so to sing to your baby, talk to your baby, play with your baby.